Hello, welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you've been subscribed for a while, you probably saw most of these videos already. What I wanted to do for the 4L80 rebuild series is take all of the videos that I did make and compile them into one video. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for the process from start to finish. Now I decided to do this because I know me personally when I'm going to reference uh, like a series of videos and there's like seven or eight different videos, I kind of lose track of it. So me personally, I'll go to look at it, I'll see one and then I'll just lose track of the series and try to find something else. So leaving you guys two options if you want to see the clips or if you want to see the whole thing all in one video you got both I will put links to all the individual videos in the description so if you want to go check out each individual video or you have one section that you want to come back and look at so hopefully you guys like it all right guys welcome back sad sad day for this thing the transmission is no longer working so that's gonna take us on another adventure so today I want to get the transmission out and I want to build a transmission stand that goes on to my engine stand so basically the reason I want to do this is I want to be able to hang the transmission up so I can flip it upside down and then completely disassemble it I'm gonna do a rebuild on it I didn't order a kit or anything yet because I want to kind of pull it apart and inspect and see what parts I need there's a lot of different variations in the kits. Some come with the band, some come with the bushings, some don't. So I kind of want to buy a kit specifically for what I need and what I want to replace so I don't end up spending extra and just not using some parts or not getting enough parts. Let's do that. I'll show you the stuff that I got and we'll make this thing. Okay, so I'm going to be just using my regular engine stand. You get some three pretty large bolts. They're half inch bolts and two pieces of 3 16 by one and a half inch by three foot. Basically what my plan is, is those pieces are thin enough, I should be able to bend them into a C shape, and then I'm gonna mold it, basically bend them both around the transmission so I can bolt it into the sides and weld them together so it's strong. Also picked up this piece of uh, two inch pipe here. So this is gonna fit in perfectly, and then I did just get the cap so it doesn't slide out the other end. And then I'll be able to put the pin in. Basically, I'm gonna weld that C-shaped thing onto here, and then I'll be able to hang the trans right from this. So with any luck today, I'd like to get the transmission hanging and pull the pump off. I wanna do an inspection on the pump just to kinda of see what I'm dealing with. Let's get started. I'm gonna drain the fluid and start pulling the trans out. Let's do it. All right, so draining the fluid out now. Picked up three of these buckets, and they're four quart buckets, so I'm draining that thing out just to see how much fluid I get out of it. It's not gonna get all the fluid out, but it should get some of it out. So we got all the fluid and everything out. That's all drained. I got the plug back in there, but now I'm in my uh, other dilemma of how I'm gonna get the transmission out. So I modified the Modified my floor jack with a little piece that goes on top of it to actually lower the, the transmission. But the problem that I have with it is that it's too high when it's on top of the jack to come out from underneath the truck. So I need a second jack. So I have somebody bringing over a second jack right now. Originally when I put it, put it in there, ended up somehow getting the transmission on top of the jack underneath the truck. So I slid it underneath and then somehow muscled it up there. I don't know how I did it, I don't even remember. I just know that I don't want to do it again. So I'm gonna borrow a jack and we'll do it the right way. So basically, I need all this extra height where I'm using the, the other jack back there to lift the thing up. So need a little bit of extra height. So I'm gonna use a second jack. All right guys, it is out. So that was actually pretty easy using the second jack. Just use some uh, wood here to get it up a little bit higher and I was able to lift it up high enough that I could get it right underneath the frame rail. And I know it probably doesn't look safe, but I was never underneath the truck. So I reached my arm under, but I wasn't underneath anything that was gonna put me in any harm's way. Cause I know you guys are really concerned about my safety. So yeah, this thing is out now. Now I'm gonna start to build the uh, mounting thing, thingy dingy. So basically these holes right here, I'm gonna wrap those pieces of metal around and there's a mounting point for a hanger on each side of this. So I'll wrap that metal around there and then I'll have a bolt go in here, bolt go in the other side and then a bolt right here to hold it in position and then I'll be able to mount it on the stand. Right here, this metal piece, bent it. It's gonna go around the trans, right just like this. Kinda got it notched out there. 
and it'll go around to this side and then I'm gonna weld a nut onto there but I do have to bend the other piece now basically I'm gonna do two pieces like this curved together uh, and then I'm gonna weld them together so they should hold together pretty strong and it won't be flexible uh, or at least that's the goal so got this one done now you guys can uh, watch me monkey around and try to make the other one guys I understand there's probably a 100% chance that there's a better way to do this but this is what I got so this is what I'm doing enjoy it so yeah see it's not so bad already so now I'm gonna start to trim these pieces down I'll cut them a little long I'll cut these down and I'm gonna make sure that these are right before I do any welding on it but basically the angle, and I'm gonna weld this seam here, and it'll be really thick. And that's about as thick as the normal uh, the stands are. So then I'll weld a nut on here, here, and here, and it should be gold. Okay, so we got this thing all welded up now, all the way around on both sides. And I welded this bolt into this nut. This is all welded all the way around. And then this one is just welded to this. So I can actually loosen this one up and then pull it out. So this here I can just loosen. This I can loosen. And this will just pop off. I can ground this all the way down so it's actually more like a pin when it's all the way in. So that's what that thing looks like when it's all the way in. Just like a pin and it's just enough to grab inside of there. All right guys, here's the finished product. Use the uh, engine hoist to get it up on the stand, but that's what it looks like. So it's in there freestanding now, all by itself. It's uh, pretty level, works pretty good. And what I think is really cool, yeah, light doesn't barely even wobble or anything. It's uh, pretty firm, pretty stiff, pretty nice. So I just took two pieces of wood with some plastic wrap. It's actually a little bit higher on this side and it is coming to a V in the center right here. So my plan, and I put a little uh, piece of plastic coming down right into a drain there. So my, my goal with this is that it's gonna, all of, as I put the parts on the table, it'll drain everything to the middle and then down to here into the bucket. And hopefully that'll keep the mess to a minimum. So let's get started on pulling the pan. I wanna get the pump off tonight. I gotta pull the pan off to get the pump off. So let's do that. So we're gonna start by taking off these bolts right here. There's 17 10 millimeter bolts. I already have them removed on the table. Let's pull the pan. All right, so the pan's just gonna come right off like this. And it is kind of dirty inside the pan. This is a reusable gasket on this. So I'm gonna keep that thing and make sure I don't damage it. I'm gonna set the pan off to the side. And I'll take all of my bolts that I have here and I'm gonna put the bolts inside the pan. Just to make sure I don't lose them. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this filter off. This is the filter. So I'm just gonna lift up on it a little bit and then I'm gonna rock back and forth and pull this thing. Just wiggle it until you pull it out. There you go. So then I'm also gonna take the filter and put the filter back in the pan. Uh, judging by how dirty that pan is, I'm probably gonna get a kit with a whole new uh, filter and everything too, because this is like really, really dirty inside here. I was expecting some, you know, fluid and stuff, but there's just a lot of a lot of black inside there, so I'm guessing there's a, a lot of bad parts too, so glad we're doing this thing. So next I'm going to pull the pump off. I have uh, some 13 millimeter bolts here. I'm going to pull these bolts off. Usually you need a puller to grab onto here and then yank this thing off, but uh, you can actually stick a pry bar in down here once you have the bottom off and pull it out, so that's how I'm going to do it.
start this pump. Got the pump out. This is the front side on the outside of the transmission. That's the shaft that slips out. Slips out off of the uh, input shaft. So I already got this kind of pre-loosened. Just got uh, five 13 millimeter bolts again. Okay, so here's the inside of the pump. You see it's got these gears here. This is the pump, one of the pump gears. It has this two flat spots. That's where the torque converter actually engages. So the torque converter comes in from this side, grabs these little flat notches, and it spins this pump gear. It's basically drawing fluid in this side here creating a cavity to draw fluid in and then it's transferring the fluid here and then brings it together and this is where it's actually pressurizing the fluid. So it pressurizes the fluid here, sends it back out through this channel. So it's drawing the fluid in here on this side as this is turning, comes in, it's drawing the fluid in here, transfers it over the top and then pumps it into this little cavity and as this is turning, it keeps compressing the fluid into here. And then it sprinkles it where it needs to go. So let's check these gears. These gears actually don't look too bad. There's a little bit of scoring on them, but nothing serious. This side of the gear looks really good. That's not too bad. Let's pull this guy out. All right, so this one actually doesn't look too bad either. There's no scoring or scratches or weird junk on that one. All right. Interesting. All right, so I don't see any scoring scratches, anything weird. This bushing looks like it's toast though. This bushing looks really bad. I mean, see that. The bushing is really, really scratched up, missing a lot of the material. So that'll need to get replaced. So I think most of the kits come actually with the bushing, the pump bushings. There's also some bushings inside here. Let's check these out. Those look pretty war. There's a bushing there, a bushing inside here. Wow, that looks like destroyed. There's definitely some weird, weird stuff going on in here. I wonder if the bushing is completely gone. Seems like it is. All right, so if we look a little bit closer inside here, it's a little bit tough to see it, but there's like all these score lines in here and you see a little lip right down there. So there's actually supposed to be a bushing inside of here and there's no bushing, but there's a whole bunch of scoring. There you can see all the score lines like it was spinning around inside there. So I was wondering where the bushing went. If you look down in here, you can see the bushing right there, right around the bottom of that shaft. I'm pretty sure that's that bushing. So it's actually stuck to the shaft. It's supposed to be loose on the shaft and stuck inside of here. And it's the opposite. It was loose in here and it's still stuck to the shaft. And I even stuck a flathead down there and tried to spin it and it's pretty tight on the shaft. So I'm wondering if that could explain some of my issues. Either way, it's not how it's supposed to be. I decided to take the boost valve out and, and kind of check out that situation. So we have this spring here. There's a little valve assembly here. There's two springs inside of here. And what I noticed was this, this spring here was like really loose no matter what I did. This one was tight because this was all the way in and I'm not going to put it in because it's, it doesn't want to come out. It's very difficult to get out and that's actually why I 
have this towel on my hand because I jammed the tip of this sharpened screwdriver into my hand. So I'm trying to close that hole up in my hand, but this uh, boost valve sleeve is like really doesn't want to come out of here. So this thing is normally should be kind of like loose enough to come out of there. And I'm pretty sure I should be able to pull this boost valve out of here and it's like stuck. This is definitely supposed to go in and out, like slide in pretty easily. I shouldn't have to hit it with a hammer and pound it in there basically. And then one other issue that I see with this thing, if we take these springs out of here, so you can also pull this guy out. This one, see this comes out real nice, nice and smooth, just kind of slides right out. No big deal. And that sleeve was a pain in the nuggets. So let's look at this now. If you guys can see inside of there, right there, it's like all scratched and gouged up. And there's a lot of like scoring and just junk inside there. The first time I took my finger through here, I had a bunch of metal shavings and junk stuck all over my hand. Let's take the boost valve sleeve and look at this thing. It is all kind of scratched and scored up. Like it was like way tight inside of there. I don't think it should be that tight where it's actually scoring and scratching the outside of it. I think this is a problem. So just another reason to confirm that I do wanna replace this whole unit. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's, what color the factory springs are, but this spring is white and this one is like a purple. I don't know if those are factory colored springs. It just seems kind of funky that they would be colored like that. It's almost like it's an aftermarket kit. Not sure if it is or not, but it just seems kind of weird. Anyways, just wanted to show that, and I'm gonna replace this whole junk. I just don't like it, and this uh, sleeve inside here is, is junk anyways. I can't even barely get it back in unless I smash it with a hammer, so I don't like it. All right guys, welcome back. We're gonna start taking the valve body off of this thing. You can see I already got it off now, but that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'll show you how I'm taking it off and how we're gonna do some of the like electrical testing and inspection type items. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, stick around for a while. Let's get to this thing. You got a couple uh, electronic items here. We have a, a couple solenoids. This is solenoid A, solenoid B. This is like the one, two upshift solenoid. This is the two, three. These serve different functions in all of the gears. This is the pressure control valve, and there's a valve here for the uh, torque converter clutch. Pull all that stuff out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is go through and, and undo all these bolts here. There is a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts, and then there is some um, eight millimeter bolts on top of this pressure switch assembly. I'm gonna go through right now and unbolt all these. This tube here goes back to the tail housing. This is what lubricates the, uh, the back end. I'm gonna get this thing out of the way so I can get to this bolt down here. Pressure switch assembly. Uh, we'll undo the plug here. Just pull in on these little clippies. Pull them out, and then we're gonna want to twist this right here, and then it'll it'll break free. We'll go ahead and remove the wiring harness. This is the A solenoid plug. This is the B solenoid plug. I already have them unclipped, but. Uh, this one is the torque converter clutch. And here is the pressure control. So 
So I'm gonna pull this off to the side. We can hang it off to the side like this, or we can pull the harness completely out. Uh, I was just using a big socket to slip over the outside. This plug has these four clips on the outside that clip onto the case. I just ran this over to the side and then kind of twisted it and wiggled and then it pushes it back out. So next to we have, now that we got all of the bolts out, we have this little uh, roller jiggy here. It's bent, keeps downward pressure on your gear selector detent. So if you listen to this, that's what you're actually hearing when you're, you're shifting. So that noise you're hearing, that's that little detent when you're shifting. So one thing to watch out for is this unit here actually has a little pin that catches onto this valve. This is your manual valve for the valve body. This is what's basically making the selection and changing the, the hydraulic fluid passages inside based on the, the gear position. So when you're, when you're moving this manual valve, it's changing the fluid passages to go to this pressure switch and then that pressure switch is making the decision based on the fluid pressure on how to activate certain valves based on engine speed, RPM. So now that we have all of the bolts out, I'm going to lift up this valve body and make sure that it's gonna come out. It's gonna lift straight up. I will be replacing the gasket either way. Uh, some of this fluid in here actually looks pretty nasty. It looks like there's metal shavings in some of it and it's kinda Kind of goopy and nasty. So a little bit more about this parking linkage here. You can see that this this is uh, connected over to this rod that goes to the back of the transmission. So if I push this all the way this direction, which would be in the park position, you can see it compress this spring. And this is actually what is gonna be locking your transmission into the park position. So when I compress the spring, if you listen, Now that just locked into position. So now this internal gear here won't turn at all. And that's when you actually click and lock into your, in your park position. So I'll show that again. You can see down the gear down in there. I lock this into the park position, rotate. Now it locks into place. Now you're in park. So next there's gonna be eight little check balls in here. One here, one here, 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 and here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use a little uh, Neo magnet, and I'm just gonna go through and uh, pull all of these check balls out of here. So I got all eight balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight on the other side, and I might even just leave them connected to the magnet over on the bench. We also have to take this uh, reverse band servo off. All right, so you're gonna have, after you get all the check balls out, you're gonna have two little bolts here. These bolts are hollow, they have holes in them, they also serve as oil passages. Uh, this is gonna be a Torx, I believe this is a T40 Torx. And then this one is going to be a 3 8 12 point. So I'm gonna save these bolts. Uh, the rebuild kits usually come with these two bolts, but I'm gonna save them just in case. Now that we have the check balls and the bolts out, I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, reverse band servo out of here. This is also gonna be 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna take all the bolts out. Pop this guy loose. Wow, that's dirty inside there. I put all the bolts in there. This gasket is not reusable, so the kit should come with one of these. Take this guy very gently and twist and pull off. There's a whole bunch of junk in there. Pretty dirty. So I'm just gonna put this back like this, set it off to the side. 
Pull this out and there's just a spring inside here. Set this off to the side. So now I'm gonna stand it up and let all this fluid drain out of here. That should be fun. All right, so now I'm just gonna let that drain. Okay, so next I wanna do the, the testing of the electrical components inside the valve body. So I'm gonna check the A and B solenoids. These should be uh, between 20 and 40 ohms. We have 20.2 on the A solenoid. Five on the B solenoid, and we'll check the uh, torque converter clutch valve. This should be between 10 to 17, I believe. That's at 10.2, that is good. And then for the uh, pressure control, that should be between 5 and 4 and 5, and that's at 4 ohms. So all of the uh, electronics inside the the valve body are good. Next thing we want to check is this uh, pressure switch. So what we have here is a bunch of little switches. So these are all little membrane switches and you can see there's electrical contacts on the outside. So as you move the manual valve with the shifter, it redirects fluid to these switches and this is what controls uh, different passages of fluid and the, the shifting. So when the fluid switches to this valve, it closes this switch and it, it is actually an electrical switch. So when you have pressure here, it closes that switch and passes the current. So what we want to do is go through, use the resistance again. What I'm going to do is put the probe across, put the probe across these contacts and I'll push down on it. Close that switch. Now you can see the resistance is going to drop down to zero because that switch is closed. So if we do the same thing over here, push down on this, now you'll see the resistance drop to zero again because that switch is closed. So I did already go through and check all of these. These are good, but that's how you would do the electrical testing on the valve body and make sure all the electrical components are good. All right, just to explain this again, so this is the uh, this is the pressure switch assembly. This goes on here. So these little membrane switches line up with these holes here. So this plug is like an output from these switches. So when you move the manual valve based on your shift lever position, you're changing the way the fluid is moving inside the valve body, which is in turn opening and closing these switches and sending an output to control different parts of the transmission and giving you your your shifting. So next I want to get this this plate off of here. So we're going to take this third and fourth accumulator off. So this is the housing. Just uh, six eight millimeter bolts. Try to keep this stuff all together. Take the springs out. This plate will just pop right off. So this thing is actually pretty dirty, so I'm glad I took this apart. I'll probably probably get a new one of these plates when I get the kit, but look at all dirty this stuff is. This is like just gobs and gobs of black junk. This is like thick stuff in here. So glad we're taking this thing apart. It's just really, really thick. Thick junk and a lot of this fluid looks like there's metal shavings in it so interested to see when we get deeper into the trans and see what we got going on in there I'm gonna start to clean some of this stuff up so what I'm gonna do for this portion this is probably not a very uh, scientific testing method here but I'm going to just make sure that all of these little rods inside here move around when I push on them 
and they move freely. So like this one right here, this moves nice and free on the spring. Doesn't seem like there's any issues. I did test all the solenoids already, so I confirmed that those are fine. There's also a little filter down here. This thing is nice and clean, so I don't really have to worry about that. Like, look at this gob of goo right here. There's just thick black stuff all over the place. I am gonna grab some gloves, because my hands are so sensitive. No, I usually don't wear gloves. I usually hate wearing gloves, um, but there's a lot of fluid and stuff, and with touching the camera and the tools and stuff, mainly I just don't want to get the cameras all full of garbage, so let's turn the freaking camera on, goofball. First thing we're gonna do is take the input shaft. This whole assembly is gonna come out all in one piece. So this is the uh, overrun drum assembly. Basically this is for the overdrive, the fourth gear. This is your fourth clutch assembly underneath this ring, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing out. And it's kinda hard. Not really, it just comes out like this. Just pull it on out. So we're gonna take this thing, and there's a little snap ring holding this shaft on down here. I'm just gonna take this thing, I'm gonna set it off to the side. We'll leave it kinda, kinda facing down like that. And then the next thing we're gonna wanna do is, there's a snap ring around here to get all these fourth clutches out. So we're gonna go around and try to find a happy place here. Just snap ring out. So I'm gonna basically just take everything and kind of put it face down so I I know kind of what, what direction it's all facing. Then this little ring is gonna come off. Here. And then all these clutches should come out. So these are some clutches and steels. So we're gonna pull all these guys out with it, and then we'll just take these things and we'll put them over here. Let's kind of look through them a little bit. And they do look a little bit kind of black and dark. Oh, well, we'll throw those things over here for now. Put a snap ring on just like that so we know which way it is. Next we have this this is the fourth drum here. So this is just gonna come out. So if you look right there, that's the Torx bolt that we took out of the valve body before. So if you don't pull that thing out, this drum won't come out. So we'll take this thing, set it off to the side. Set it off to the side. So next we have the forward drum. So then you can see this little guy over here, this is for one of the speed sensors. So that's not touching it, it's actually just reading this drum. So this guy's gonna come out of here and we'll just pull this thing straight out. Just be careful too because there's a, there is a bearing right here on top of this. So this is a three piece bearing. See this? That's a bearing, so I don't wanna make sure we remember where that thing is. And I'll just lift this guy out. And we'll put it face down, right over here. Let's give it a little whirl, we'll check out the bottom. And there's a little uh, thrust washer right here, so we'll wanna remember where that thing is. Oh, lost the bearing. So next, we have the direct drum. I don't know if I'll be able to pull this guy out. Oh, I got it. So this is the direct drum. So there's some more clutches inside here, the direct clutches. This is all a big uh, spring assembly. And there's a piston underneath, snap ring that just pulls out. Let's set this thing off to the side. Keep everything in order. And this is a, a band. This is our 
low band. Isn't really active for that that much, so this actually looks pretty good. Looks pretty decent, so we'll take the low band, we'll set it off to the side here. So we'll put it there. So now there's a snap ring that's holding the rest of this assembly, but I'm actually going to have to take out another piece. But we'll get the snap ring off. I don't even need a tool. All right, here, I was just able to get it with my hand. So I'll take this guy off. And then we do have uh, the intermediate clutches. So we do have some more clutches and steels right here. Let's check these out. The steels look like they're pretty burnt up. So I'm planning on probably just replacing all this stuff. But yeah, they look a little bit, they don't look terrible, but. We'll just look at this thing, see these little tabs at the bottom, we'll want to remember which way those things are going. And on the bottom of the intermediate clutches and steels. Set this down kind of in order. Maybe we'll pop these guys over to the side here. So there's actually another snap ring down there that's gonna come off. I'm going to take out the transmission cooler line fitting, the return fitting. So this return fitting here, that actually goes into the center support. So this other bolt that we had down here, that was the, the 3 8 that goes into the center support. This goes into the center support as a return, so we're gonna wanna pull that out of there. So this is what this looks like. So that's all the way in and it's going into that uh, center support for the return. So if that's still in, we're not gonna be able to pull this whole assembly out. So we gotta get this thing out of the way before this comes out. So we do have another snap ring. This is actually a beveled snap ring. bit tough to get out. Get this thing out and this is when I say this is a beveled snap ring you can see you can see the bevel on it. It's kind of got that little angle. This bevel has to go up towards the front of the transmission so just have to remember that when we put that thing back in there. Next, we should be free and clear to pull this whole assembly out, and I may or may not be able to do this with my hands, but we're gonna give it a swirl. So I'm gonna grab basically this whole center support housing. Oh! And I actually, I wanted to pull it up with the whole shaft, but Maybe I'll just pull the center support out and off it. All right, so this is the center support. And then we're piston some springs inside of here. So we'll pull this guy out. And this is actually, there's a three piece bearing, another three piece bearing. One piece of the bearing got stuck to the side here, got stuck to the bottom. You can see the, the needle bearings exposed. Down at the bottom there, you can see that needle bearing. So I'm just gonna make sure that this stays all together. I'm gonna get this thing out of the way for now. 
And then what we want to remember here is that there is another washer, another thrust washer. And we also have this uh, roller sprag down in here. So we don't want to lose that thing, but now I should have enough of the shaft to grab. Okay, so I was getting hung up on this little tail shaft housing cup here. So this is just kind of like pressed onto the shaft. Just a couple taps on it and it came out. So it was actually getting stuck on this little lip here. And there's just uh, six 15 millimeter bolts. Pull the tail housing off, pop this thing off, now it'll slide out. And last but not least, we should be able to pull the rest of this out. So I'll just pull straight up, pull this whole piece out. This is like Gel shaft housing, all that junk. So this piece was on the end like this. That's why I was having problems getting it out before. So I had to pop this thing off. Keep this all assembled as one piece. We do have a washer there. And we do have a, a three piece. A three piece bearing right there. So I'm going to take the bottom of this bearing off of this center support assembly and I'm just going to put that back on there so that bearing is all together. And then we'll throw this here. Next thing we just have this reverse band and this should just pull right out. Here we go. We got one more little washer at, at down at the bottom. So that'd be the last piece. All right guys, here we go. There it is, everything all laid out on the table. Ready to go through it. Start looking at what's bad, what's good, what we need to replace. The first thing we're gonna do is this fourth drum right here. So this is actually two separate pieces and it's separated by the spring. So this is gonna be spring loaded. So there's just springs all the way around here and there's a snap ring up top here. We'll push down and start to get the snap ring out. So once we start to get that off, we can work this around, pushing down on the springs. Snap ring is loose. So now this top spring plate thing just comes right off and then this will fall into two separate pieces. All right, so now that these are separated, let's look inside of it. So there's a little uh, lip seal inside of here. There's a rubber seal and there's also a little rubber seal right here, a little lip seal, so it can be kind of difficult getting these two pieces back together because those seals actually catch. So it takes a little bit of work, but right now we're just disassembling. So we got this apart. That's ready for the cleaner. These are all the fourth clutches. The only thing I'm gonna keep from these are basically this, this top plate and the snap ring for that. So these two pieces here. And then all these will be replaced and these come with the kit. Next is this overrun assembly here. It's basically your overdrive. So this snap ring is normally on here, right at the bottom there. So we'll pull that snap ring off. That one's actually bent. Pull this piece out. If you're watching the previous video, you can see this bushing is actually stuck on here. This was supposed to be inside the pump, but it's actually stuck onto this shaft. So that's one of the reasons that I wanted to get a new pump. All right, so switch up the angle a little bit. I was having a hard time getting a, getting a shot that's actually decent that you can see with enough light. So this is the overrun assembly. You can inspect inside here. There's a bushing inside here. I'm gonna be replacing the bushings. I did get a kit with bushings. So I'm not really gonna inspect them too much. This will come off right here. You have a planetary gear set. There's a little bearing down inside there. So this all looks pretty decent. 
here you're gonna have a little roller sprag here. Very careful with this, this thing likes to fall apart. These things, you bump them a little bit and they'll fall out with a spring. There's a spring inside there. That thing will fall out. I took it apart once and it was like every time I touched it, it just wanted to fall apart more. So <clears throat> that goes in like this. We'll pull that out. The kit I did get has one of those also, so I'll just be replacing that. Here, there's another set of clutches inside here. So we'll go ahead and pop the, pop the snap ring off. And we'll pull the clutches and the steels out of here. These actually don't look too bad. But we're going to go ahead and, and replace these here. Anyways, so we'll set them off to the side. So there is actually a piston inside of here. And this piston is going to come out. So there's another snap ring down there. Yeah, I'm going to have to put this on a press actually to get this out. Because this has to be... This has to be pressed down and this snap ring comes out to get that piston out. So maybe we'll do that a little bit later. This is the forward drum. Three piece bearing for the forward drum. Let's flip this over. There's a washer inside of here. Just going to leave that on there for now. But there's also a snap ring here. And this assembly will come out. This will come off. So there's another set of clutches and steels inside here. This will come out. This is actually stuck on there. So we have another set. Clutches and steels. Uh, this is the forward drum. The forward drum has a little bit of a thinner, thinner, thinner set of steels. This is like a 77 thousandths thickness. And these have the little dovetail little pieces right here. So the, the direct drum, they just look like this all the way around. Forward drum has these guys, and these are 77 thousandths. I'll pull all these out. And then this is supposed to be a, like a dished plate but you can see this one's not dished it's it's like wavy it's supposed to be a dished dish plate but I think this one just got way overheated and warped from slipping so these are all bad see that is warped these are all pretty hot looking They kind of look like look like crap, but then let's check this guy out right here. But let's look at this clutch. That one is completely wore down. All the clutch material is gone. You hear it snap? It's pretty pretty warped. And all this material here is gone. So that is toast. So these are junk. Junk, junk, junk. So here again, there's a piston inside of here. But I'm going to have to use a tool to depress this. All these springs, there's like 16 springs or something in there. So I'm going to have to depress that, pull that assembly out. For now, I'll put this back together like this. Over here. 
And I'm just going to set these clutches and steels off on the floor because I'm not going to use them. I'll do the same with these forward, forward clutches and steels and get them out of the way. Forward drum has the dovetail pieces in their 77,000s. The direct drum it just has the square pieces. That's like a 90, 91 thousandths steel. And then the overrun drum has the holes in them. So that's how you can kind of tell the difference between them. Now over to the direct drum snap ring. This will come off. We'll save this one. Pull clutches and steels out. This is supposed to be a dished ring. And this is all warped. You can tell it just got way overheated and you can see it's all it's all wavy. The back side of the direct drum also has this intermediate sprag clutch in there. So this is actually a sprag inside of there. Turns clockwise, does not turn counterclockwise. This actually feels pretty good. This is going to have a, a spiral snap ring, snap ring, and there's this little retainer plate here. I'm going to try to find where this uh, snap ring starts. So yeah, see how this spiral snap ring goes around twice then we have this retainer plate here it looks pretty good then the spray assembly should come out so there's an outer race all right so we have this uh, little plate down here too a lot of this stuff looks really good. Bunch of little rollers. This roller sprag should actually come out of here. Watch it explode all over the place and I'm going to have a thousand of these things all over. You can see they got the top piece. And that's where this bottom piece would be. So this doesn't look too bad. It still functions. Everything seems like this is fine. I'm just going to throw this all together and leave it together. The kit that I got did come with a new one of these. Leave this mostly together now for now. I'm gonna set this off over here. Next we have this center support assembly. So we do have this little shaft inside here. Pull that out. This one's got a little bit of a softer spring, so I'm not gonna need to use a tool for this one. Just get the snap ring off. is a bunch of springs. It's the same concept on the other drums. The other ones are just a lot tougher to get off, so I'm going to use a press or some kind of a tool. And this little piston should come out of here. 
I also have a lip seal here, so I'll be inspecting these. I'm going to just be replacing them, but I'm going to inspect them just to make sure that they're okay. And I'm going to leave them in until I get the the kit in. So I'm going to do like a one-for-one -one swap on each piece after I, after I pull it off. Make sure I have all the right parts. That's pretty much all this. This thing looks okay. There's not really any damage or any weirdness going on here. Ah, uh, there's a little, there's some metal shavings in there, but looks like metal shavings in the fluid, but I said that in quite a few of the other videos too, several times. I have been finding metal shavings like all in the fluid, pretty much everywhere. So I'm thinking it's from, from the bushings. I haven't really found anything that seems like metal on metal wear, but it's probably just a mixture of clutch material and some of the bushings that have been worn out over time some of the bushings are pretty bad so all right i'm just gonna leave this disassembled over here and then next we have this rear carrier assembly so we do have a thrust washer there's a bushing and a bearing inside of there here is another Another sprag. I'm gonna be very careful with this. So this one actually does look worn. You can see there's like a groove all the way around the top of that. And that's actually worn into the metal. And it's big enough that I can actually it's big enough that I can actually catch my fingernail on. So Good thing I'm going to replace that. I mean, it still works, but it's worn, so we'll change it. All right, so this top piece, this rear carrier assembly, this is going to come out. Careful with that bearing in there. There is a bearing that's loose inside of there. And there is a little plastic washer on the bottom side. I'm going to set this over here. Here's a little sun gear. You can see this sun gear. There's like a little bevel at the bottom on one side and there's not on this side. So that bevel's gonna go down. There's another bearing inside there. Another one of those three piece bearings. And this guy here Gonna be another snap ring. You gotta stop touching it and then it pops right out. That's how that works. So then this tail shaft is just gonna pull right out of here. So there's another three piece bearing inside there. I'm just gonna keep that together. is going to come right out like this. So we have this whole assembly here. Another bearing. That's pretty much that. So I'm going to actually put a lot of this back together for now. Alright, so now that this is back together, I'm just going to set this off to the side. There's not really a whole lot in here that's that's really bad or that I'm replacing. So I'm going to leave this assembly together off to the side while I do the cleaning on the other parts. Alright, so this is the overrun drum. 
I'm just using some C-clamps. There is like a couple special tools you can buy for that doing this, but I am just going to do it this way because I don't rebuild transmissions, so I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on weird tools. I'm just going to try to do this. It really just should just need enough to loosen the snap ring. So once you depress this little spring hold down, pop the snap ring off. <clears throat> Should be able to loosen the, the ring. And then this will come out. This ring will come out. See, it's just a little plate that's got a bunch of springs on it. Actually, it looks pretty clean on the inside. And you have a piston inside of here. This is a bonded piston. You have the same same thing basically inside the the forward and the direct drum. Same concept. Spring is holding the piston down. This actually looks good. Inside here looks pretty clean. So the kit that I got does come with the new pistons so I am going to replace these pistons so this is going to go off to the side and we'll put a new piston in and now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same process with the forward and the direct drum depress the springs remove this uh, snap ring and pull the pistons out Basically what I'm using here is just a jug of odorless mineral spirits. They don't stink up the garage either. And I'm using a little, little oil pan on top of a bucket. And I'm just going to sit in that chair and scrub a dub dub. <laughs> the best part about having a wedding ring made out of a nut. Okay, so today is a day. and We got some stuff in the mail. We got the transmission rebuild kit. I got the HD2 kit. So right now I'm on my way to Fleet Farm. I'm gonna pick up some transmission fluid so I can soak the clutches and get everything installed. Let's go get some fluid. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get to the bottom of this thing and I'm going to get all the clutches and steels and everything out. Here, so what I'm going to do is take just all of the clutches and pull these out because I'm going to soak all of these. So I took the two quarts that I bought, put it inside this pan, and now I'm going to open these up and dip them in the pan. Okay, so we got all of the clutches soaking in the pan. See kind of uh, quite a range on suggestions on how long you should soak them. Some don't even soak them. Some say five minutes, 15 minutes, some say 24 hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them in there, 
And I'm gonna let them soak while I'm taking all of the bushings out that I need. So that's probably gonna take me a while to get the bushings out. I'm gonna let them soak and then I'll let them hang and dry. Let's get started on the bushings. Okay, so I got this bushing replaced here. Just kind of came in from the backside and popped it out with a, a flathead. And then I used a little hand press to press the thing in there. It was actually pretty difficult to do it, so I'm gonna be a little bit more selective on which bushings I replace, because I don't really have the tools for it. I have a press, but it's not a very strong press. I'm just gonna go through and do a good inspection on the, the bushings and then decide which ones I'm gonna replace. The press I use is this little, little hand guy right here. And it works, but it's pretty difficult to do it. So instead of ripping all the bushings out and then possibly not being able to get them in or damaging the new ones, I think I'm just gonna be very careful and probably not change all of them, but I'll change some of them if they're bad. That's gonna take a while, so I'll leave that part out. Okay, so the first piece of the kit that I'm gonna replace right here is this little roller sprig. This is the old one. You can see it's kinda, kinda worn around the top edges. There's some metal shavings coming off there. So this is going to get replaced, and the new one's already in. Okay, so along with the roller spray, it's also getting a new uh, Torrington bearing, and it's getting a new washer. Alright guys, the transmission rebuild is all done. It's ready to go back in, and I'm just kidding. I just found on the center support, when I was going to replace these ceiling rings, that this thing is all galled up right here. So you can see that this section down here is like nice and smooth, and then there's a clear line where there's some wear. So this is actually worn down quite a bit. It's actually worn down quite a bit in this section. Um, and it's all gritty, and there you can see it a little bit better. All the way around, it's kind of all galled up and a bunch of chunks hanging off of it, so uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace this, but that's going to set me back uh, a few days at least, because I'm going to have to order one, try to find one, but because I'm just not really comfortable at this point with putting this back in there because of how this thing looks. So you can see like this section right here, it's all kind of chunky and it's pretty bad, so that's probably where some of the metal came from. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think I'm just gonna replace this thing. So these ceiling rings are actually so wore down that when I tried to pull this top one out, so you can see how there's that groove that's in the middle of the ring. It's actually the, because there's metal that's pushed in and it was wearing a groove in, so I actually had a hard time pulling this out because the outside is wider than the, the center of it, so I could barely get it out because of all that metal that's, that's pushed over. So other than that, this is the piston for this section. I did go and replace these lip seals. So both of these lip seals are replaced. So this is good to go. Um, I'm just not really very comfortable with this and putting that back in there right now. All right, so the first piece of this uh, whole assembly process of the main components is gonna be the this rear assembly section. So this is your output shaft, your tail shaft, another Sun Gear planetary assembly. You do have two bearings, one bearing here, Another bearing here. So I'm just gonna go and replace these one for one swap as I pull them out of the packaging. So that was this bearing here. So I'm just gonna match it up, make sure I get the same bearing coming out of the package. Same thing. Now I'll do the same thing here. This bearing, pull it out. That's this is going to be this one. So that's going to be this bearing here. And I did drop it, so I'm just going to make sure all the needle bearings are kind of okay in there. I'll take this thing and put it back down underneath. So now that these bearings are in there, this is going to go through this section. To the bottom side. I did hear the bearing kind of fall off a little bit. Holy moly, guys. I'm just gonna make sure that this is in there okay. And then I'll just make sure I pop this piece back on. So this is gonna go on here. And now the tail shaft is gonna go on. Output shaft. So now that the output shaft is on, the snap ring can go on. Alright, 
So that should be okay. Let's make sure that our bearing is lined up. I'm probably gonna drop a little bit of uh, clean transmission fluid down in there. Lubed up okay. That looks pretty good. So now that that section is in there, I'm gonna take this washer here, line that thing up. It's got these little feet on the bottom and they line up, they line up inside these holes. And it seems like it'd be like really easy to line that up, but it's not, at least I struggle with it. Now we're gonna take this rear sun gear, kind of lube it up, get some fluid on there. So you can see that this one has this little beveled edge on the bottom on the inside, where this one's squared off on the inside right here. This one is a beveled edge. So that beveled edge is gonna go in here first. Now that's gonna engage in those those sun gears or planetary gears inside there. So next we have this shaft. We'll do the same thing, throw a little bit of fluid on there. So you have these holes right here, these lube holes. That lube hole I'm gonna line up with this little notch right here. See how, see how that lube hole is lined up with that notch? Slam that thing down. So we do have another three-piece bearing. I'm gonna leave that one out and off to the side. That's a new bearing. So next, after all this junk is in there, this is a little bit tricky. What I'm just gonna do is kind of take it and twist it a little bit. Sometimes one side gets raised up a little higher than the other. So let's lift it up, twist it. Now it's seated all the way. So you can see it rotating inside there. Now I'm gonna take this bearing and stick that bearing back over the top so it rides right on top of that. I'm gonna take this thrust washer and throw that right over the top so that's gonna sit just like that. All right, so just for good measure, um, this is a washer that goes inside, like basically at the back of the transmission. And then this is gonna go on the back side of this carrier assembly here. So I'm gonna just put this on here, There's some holes in the back, and then this thing is gonna go on the back of the transmission. So I'm just gonna set this with it for now. And then I'm gonna set this whole assembled section off to the side. Okay, so next we have the center support. So this center support goes inside that rear carrier assembly, goes right over the top of that. So this will be the next piece that's gonna go in the transmission. This is a piston. It has a little spring assembly on the top and a snap ring. So this one is actually the bad one, the one that I'm replacing. I have a new one on the way, but just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and replace these ceiling rings, all four of them. I'm not gonna do it on this one, but I'm gonna show the assembly. This piston here, I did go through and see these lip seals inside. Replace the lip seals. There's a lip seal there. Basically, this seal has a little lip on it. So there's a flat section inside here. This is the flat section. And then this is a little lip that kind of hangs down. So if I'm putting this over, the flat section is gonna go inside this piston. The lip you can see right there hangs down. Actually kind of hangs over the tip of the screwdriver. So it's like flush at the top and then it hangs down. Same thing on the inside here, you can see that little lip. I take a little bit of uh, transmission fluid. And I'm gonna put this over the top. Kind of rock it back and forth. So there is actually like a special kind of lip seal tool, but I, I'm gonna try just using a feeler gauge and see what that does. See the lip is actually kind of, lip seal is kind of catching on the outside. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful. I thought it was just catching on the inside to make sure, see so yeah, I actually kind of pulled it out there. So I'm gonna be a little more careful next time. All right, so now it's all the way good, all the way around. And I'll put the spring over at the top. You can see the spring is gonna go inside these little holes. And next, the snap ring goes over the top here. 
This one I might actually be just be able to get with my hands. Push the spring down. There we go. So now that's all the way in. So this piece is assembled now. So there's your center support assembly. Okay, so we're on to the direct drum now. This is the new piston that's gonna be going in. This is the old one that is coming out. So I'm just gonna take that, replace it, get rid of the old one. We do have this little wave plate here. And I'd like to apologize to anyone that watched the first video. Um, I said that this plate was actually warped from heat, but they actually did a design change. I think it was around 97. So like the 96 or 97 and newer have this waved uh, plate inside the drum instead of a dish plate. So this is actually good. I'm gonna be keeping this. That's a good one, so I apologize for that one. Next we have some steels here. The new, these are the new steels. So in the direct drum, we have the steels that have all of the square tabs on them. The forward drum has like a dovetail tab. So this is a thicker plate and you can easily tell the difference. It's almost one plate thicker when you hold them all together. So the thicker plates have the square tabs. These go in the direct drum. The thinner plates with these dovetails on them, these dovetail tabs, those go in the forward drum. So we're gonna use the thicker plates with the square tabs and the direct drum. So there's five of these plates, and then there's gonna be five clutches. We have the main drum. This is completely stripped right now. There's gonna be a sprag assembly that goes on the bottom. There is a lip seal inside of here. We have this spring assembly. This has 16 springs. We have two snap rings. One spiral snap ring holds the bottom spring assembly on, and then this one holds the top spring on. We have this retaining plate, a snap ring, another big ring that goes on the top. So first thing I'm gonna do here is pull this lip seal out. This lip seal is actually good. Looks pretty good, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it. So I'm gonna change it with this new one. So I'm gonna lube this thing up pretty good. Some fresh transmission fluid. And then go ahead and put this lip seal back in here. We're doing the same thing that we did before with the other lip seal. This lip seal is gonna go point outward. So this lip is actually pointing towards me right now. So it's gonna catch this way. And see if I put the screwdriver in there, the lip is actually pointing towards me. That's the direction that it goes. So next we're going to, just to make this a little bit easier, we're going to also be replacing this So I'm just gonna take this whole assembly and we'll actually put it right over the top here. Maybe I'll disassemble it. I'll put this piece on first, facing down. I'll put this over the top. And then this outer race is gonna go right over the top here. This is supposed to spin clockwise, but not counterclockwise. Now this is all the way down. Spins clockwise, does not spin counterclockwise. You see the whole drum turning with me? Clockwise, it spins. Doesn't spin counterclockwise. All right, so that's good. We're going to put this retaining plate on. And then next we have this spiral snap ring. So the snap ring is actually two full loops and it's spiraled. So we'll put this thing on. Make sure that ring is seated inside there. So now this doesn't come out. It's not going anywhere. We got clockwise, spins, doesn't spin counterclockwise. So that's good to go with the new piece. And then first thing we're gonna do is put this piston inside here. I do actually have this jug of transmission assembly lube. Look at how fancy that is. All right, get this thing activated a little bit. Use some, use some lube. 
gonna uh, just use two fingers, get it all lubed up, stick it in, and then swirl it around. Throw it on the piston. And this is gonna be a little tricky now. So we gotta get this piston to seat all the way down inside here. So we do have the lip seal we gotta worry about, and we have these outer seals that are gonna snag as we're trying to put this thing in. This slip seal tool slash feeler gauge. I'm gonna try to get this thing in there. It's seated all the way down past that lip there. It is down all the way. You can see it kind of spins freely now. So I did have to go around the top seal a little bit to get it to sit flush here. And then I had to go around here keeping even pressure a few times. It took quite a few tries to, to actually get it down there, but it's in now. So we get to do it all over on the forward drum. So maybe I'll try to show you that whole process because that took me like 20 minutes. Next, we're gonna put the wave plate in there. And you can see it already has a ring around it from where the piston was pushing on it. So we're gonna go wave plate, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch. There we go. So wave plate, steel, Clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch. Basically five and five. And then we'll put these guys in there. Clutch. Steel, clutch. Steel, clutch. And then on the top, we're gonna do this top ring here. And then the snap ring is going to go on the outside. The spring plate will go here to hold the piston down in place. All right, so for this portion, we are going to take the direct drum in the spring assembly here. This needs to be compressed down before you can get the snap ring out. And we're going to go through and replace all of these 16 springs. So these 16 springs, let's see if we can just get them all this way. So they're coming out. Okay, so bottom plate is removed. I'm just gonna go through one by one and start to pry these springs out. Okay, so we got all the springs out now. So these are the old springs. They're a little bit thinner. These ones are thicker and shorter, but they're a lot tougher. That's about how much farther I can squeeze it just by hand. So these are a lot, lot stronger for the HD2 kit. So now we'll just flip it over and make sure we get everything lined up. All right, so that looks pretty good. All the tabs are inside the springs. All the springs are around that top section. So now I'll just take the rest of the drum, lay this over the top, do another little double check before I stick this thing over the top. And I'll go ahead and compress this thing and put this on. This will have to be compressed with a clamp, but this snap ring goes over the top here. So hold this top ring in, I'll put this snap ring in there quickly. All right guys, so this is basically the process that I'm using to compress the spring to get the snap ring back in there, to compress it, to get it out, and to put it back in. So pressing this down, there you can see the snap ring just fell into place when I got it back down a little bit more. So now I will slowly pull these clamps off. These are just regular wood clamps. Mount them underneath the table and then it's able to push this down enough to get that snap ring in there. And that is the assembly of the direct drum. So we got all the clutches and steels in there. Wave plate. Remember, clockwise, 
and it does not spin counterclockwise. So this piece is done, ready to go. Okay boys, now we're gonna get going on the uh, forward drum here. I'm gonna get this bushing out, place that bushing. I also found a 32 millimeter socket. I'm gonna use the back side of the socket and it's like the perfect size to push that bushing in there. It's just kind of getting creative, I guess, because I don't really uh, have the tools to get those bushings in. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to find the seam. It's kind of like point of no return once you smash the hell out of it, but. This is just kind of like, uh, what is the average Joe gonna do in his garage when you wanna do this? I don't have the tools for it, but you can see when I said the seam, what I meant was there's like a little section here that connect, connects into this other piece. So there's actually like a seam in there where you can split it and get it to come out. You can see it a lot better. There's two little, two little like puzzle looking pieces there. So smash it at the seam and then it'll come out. New bushing kit, that looks like the right one. Score, Skorzynski. Okay, so we got that new bushing in there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. We'll start to assemble the drum. We do have a little gasket there. So I'm gonna lube that up. We're gonna take the old piston out and the new piston is gonna go in. So a new piston, I'm gonna take some fresh transmission fluid. I have a little bucket over here that I keep dipping my fingers in. It's actually the pan that the uh, clutches were soaking in. It's still got some in it. The clutches are still sitting in there. We'll get this thing all looby doobied up. You can also use the trans stuff. I'll kind of lube this piece up. Believe it or not, I actually did buy a brush just to do this with. And I'm not using it because I don't know where it is. Pretty cool. I said on the other video I was gonna try to I'm gonna try to do this drum install all in one one piece and actually show you how I'm doing it. So I put this down. You can see it rocks a little bit on the top because it's actually catching on this inner seal here. It's catching on this inner seal. Put my fingers in the lube and put it in the hole again. And then we'll grab this feeler gauge. I'm going to keep pressure on it. So you got a little section that's actually down in there. I'll go around the outer seal edge. Oh, see, just like that. A little bit easier than the last one. Just kind of go around the inner seal, get that to drop down, go around the outer seal, and then it'll actually drop down into place. So you can see now it's down in there, it's fully seated. Now we can go ahead and start putting the clutches and the steels in there. This is the wave plate. Line going around the ring is what seats down against the piston. Now that the piston is down in place, we can put that wave plate on top. Just like that. Clutches and the steels for the forward drum. So there's five of these. And remember the forward drum has the dovetail tabs on it. So these are soaked. I'm gonna go through again quick. You can see that they're soaked, they're wet and fluid. Actually look okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and get my get my fingers a little bit wet. So again, we're gonna do plate, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, steel, 
Clutch steel, clutch, steel, clutch. All right, so we'll put those in that way. All right, all right, so on top of that, we have our little spring plate here. So we're gonna need to compress this down like we did on the other one. We're going to use our clamps, compress this down and put the snap ring in. Got this set up, basically just using a couple clamps, pushing that thing down. And I'm gonna put the snap ring on. I have to get creative here. There we go. So this is still a bit of a challenge without like a good snap ring player. So I'm going to try to hook that bottom side in. There we go. Wasn't so bad. Yeah, it's almost like I tried that. So now I'm just gonna take this off. Get the other clamp off. And now the forward drum springs are good to go. So now that we have this spring that holds the piston down in place, I'm just gonna give it a little test there. Take this thrust washer. This is a new one. Just gonna lube it up a little bit. It over the top. This is a new one, replacing the old one. Not really a whole lot of difference in wear, but that's gonna go on there. This little guy, have this washer on top. Thrust washer goes underneath. Take a little bit of persuasion to get this to drop all the way down. But you can hear the difference because there's not like a metal on metal. Right now, it's hitting the clutch. There, now it dropped down all the way. Now you can hear it's metal on metal. It's actually hitting the, the piston now. So that's down all the way, that's in place. This, here we go. This is gonna go down on here. And then we have snap ring. That's good to go. Flip this thing over, and then we have our bearing. This bearing is gonna go right on here. Okay, on to the overrun drum. This is for the overdrive. This fancy little bugger here. Got a couple planetary gears. Another bearing down there. We got a little snap ring. This will come off. This will all come off and you can get these planetary gears and stuff out. These are pretty good looking, so I'm gonna leave them all in there. There is this roller sprig right here. This is gonna go down. I'm just gonna leave it kind of where it was. Make sure that all the pieces are in place. So we do have a another plate, a snap ring, a bushing, and another bonded piston here. So the kit comes with a piston. This is the new piston. Again, the piston goes under this spring assembly here. So we're gonna go ahead. There is no lip seal or anything inside there. Just gonna go through and give it another whirl, a little double check. Assembly lube on this piston. I'll throw some around on the inside. Go ahead and throw the piston down. 
That one's a little bit easier to get in. So we have this spring plate. And we have a snap ring that's gonna go over the top of this. And this one is kind of tricky. At least it was tricky getting it off. This is kind of a thicker snap ring. And I did have quite a, quite a hard time getting this one off. Also, but we'll see if we can make it work. There we go. All right, so that's just basic tools. It's the name of the game, I guess. There's a few that are, there we go. Push down on it, snaps in. So now we got the snap ring in all the way around. Like I said, this one's kind of thick. It's pretty, pretty difficult to get out. It was a little bit challenging for me just with this normal snap ring pliers and a few beers and a screwdriver. We replace this bushing also. And next we have the overdrive drum clutches and steels. So we have a plate here, three steels, three clutches. So these are all soaked. All right, so we have steel. These are the overrun drums with the holes. Go plate, clutch, steel, clutch, steel. Clutch, and we have this top plate, and then we have a snap ring. All right. Thing looks okay. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this roller sprag. I'm just gonna stuff it on here and then we'll flip this guy over. And then we'll start the battle. So we have a sun gear that we need to align with the planets. So there we got that aligned with the planets. Now we're gonna go through and try to get all the clutches lined up. Get all your planet and sun lined up. Just kind of rock back and forth and then you're going to want to just wiggle it and rock back and forth until you get it all the way down and you'll know it's down because it's going to hit metal on metal. And you get your snap ring. Put your snap ring on. Okay, now we're gonna temporarily set this off to the side. We're gonna grab this input shaft. So we have an O-ring, and then we have some Teflon ceiling rings, two different sizes, four rings, and then an O-ring. All right, so I have a green ring. It's gonna replace the black ring. I'm gonna go ahead and get these other Teflon rings off. You can see I got the two different sizes here. Teflon rings and these things like kind of stretch over. They're kind of weird. They're, they stretch over 
and then they shrink back down to the right size. So you're supposed to pull them over and then there's actually like a special tool that's really expensive that you're supposed to use that compresses it back down to the right size. A tool that you actually put over the cap, like the top of this thing, it's like a cap. You push it over and then it compresses this ring down back into size. Okay, this little clip is actually the next day because I, I decided to use this custom tool that I made to uh, compress those Teflon rings. So it's pretty high tech. Just wanna see if, if it worked, how well it worked. I say how well it worked because I know it worked, right? It's gotta work. So it's a little, they're a little wavy yet, but so they're, they're not very, they're not very loose on there anymore. So they're nice and, nice and tight. So works a little bit better than, uh, or maybe not better, but it's better than buying a, you know, $200 tool that I'm going to use one time. So, okay. So we'll take this drum, overrun drum, put a little, uh, assembly lube inside there. Now that we have these rings all on the shaft, we'll take these rings, insert this shaft all the way through, and you'll, you'll hear it seat all the way in. So once that's all the way in, there's a little groove right here. This is actually a new snap ring. Mine was kind of bent and wouldn't hold anymore, so I ended up deciding to get a new one. So I'm just gonna take this snap ring. So now that that's on there, that'll hold that overrun drum in place onto the input shaft. much it so next we have the the fourth drum this is the last drum that's actually gonna go in the case or the first one that would come out so inside here we have two lip seals there's one lip seal in this outer drum there's one on this inner drum so I'm gonna pull these out and replace these things Go ahead and pull them out. So again, here we're gonna stick the flat inside the drum. So there we have that lip seal in, facing down. And we have this other one, but the lip is actually facing to the inside. Go and do the same thing, push this lip seal in, in here. That, that lip seal's in all the way around. This lip is facing down this way. This lip is facing down this way. Okay, so the assembly of this drum is kind of tricky because you have the, the lip seals kind of fighting against each other. This one goes over the top this way. Again, there is a, there is like a special tool for this, to do this, but I'm just gonna balance this up top here. And then I'm gonna put this one over. And again, I'm gonna use the, yeah, I'm gonna use the feeler gauge. Just gonna go around the top. You can see that the, if you can see it from my angle, that none of that lip seal's overhanging. <clears throat> I just kind of go underneath, start working on it from the bottom.
All right, so now that's it in again. Try not to mess this up this time. So what I usually try to do, <clears throat> or what I've been trying to do, I should say, is get one side low and then get the snap ring entered into the groove behind one of these little tabs right here. See all the way around, it has these little tabs that are sticking up. And I'll try to get them in the, in the ring groove behind the tab. All right, that snap ring that snap ring goes in around inside these little tabs all the way around the top. So now the uh, two fourth drum sections are together. Now that we have the spring plate and snap ring in there, we'll flip this over. We have the four, fourth clutches and steels. We're gonna do Clutch, steel, clutch, steel, alternating, you guys get the drill. And then we have one more big ring that goes over the top. This thing is gonna fall in right there. And we got a snap ring. Make sure that's down all the way in place. And that's it. That's it for the assembly of the fourth drum. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, preset this, so it's going to grab right onto this shaft here. Take this rear carrier assembly, set this up, the thrust washer right in the middle. Then I'm going to take the center support and run the center support down over the top. Until it locks down all the way into that sprag. And I'll clamp this right over into that groove inside this shaft right here. So first thing we're going to want to put in is a little washer here. We're using this one, but you can kind of see where there's some, some wear all the way around. And then you can see where this was actually just rubbing on the case. So I'm going to put that down. There's some little tabs that go around here. Put that down into place. And then I'm going to take this piece. And I'm gonna put some assembly lube on there because this is actually gonna stick onto the back side of that carrier assembly. You can see here, this is the back of the carrier assembly. So this is actually what's gonna stick to on the back side. And then this will go down, straight down like that. Let's just show this a little bit better. This is this carrier assembly here. There's that little washer. These little tabs that go inside these holes. It just put some assembly lube on there to glob that thing on and stick it there so it doesn't fall down. Now that that's all ready to go, next thing I'm gonna put in is the reverse band. So this is the new reverse band. You can see here, there's these little notches. There's actually two little pegs down inside here. So this notch back here is lined up where that reverse band servo comes through and then these two little tabs are connected onto those little pins inside the case. You can see those two little tabs that stick out there. Those are going to connect right into these two little notches here. Next thing I'm going to do is put in this little snap ring. This little snap ring goes down uh, right onto this little bottom ledge here. And this is going to go under the center support assembly. So next I'm going to drop this whole large piece in. Uh, key part is where these holes line up. These two holes here and there's this threaded hole that comes into the bottom of the, the case. So those three holes are going to need to line up down here. Those three holes come through right there. So you can see kind of where this little notch is. You're going to have to line that up as you drop it in. Make sure that those holes are lined up in the right spot. With any luck I'll be able to drop this in there without actually 
dropping it. Okay, that worked pretty good. So you can see we're fully seated in that next groove for the next snap ring is lined up nicely. Also had the center support holes lined up nicely. That worked out pretty good. So let's pull that off. Next I have the beveled snap ring. This again, this is the beveled snap ring. You can see it's beveled kind of at the top right here. It's tapered down. So this beveled edge goes up this way. Let's throw this thing in. Okay. So beveled snap ring is in. Next, on top of the center support, we have the wave plate for the intermediate clutches. Don't forget that thing or you'll have to pull half the transmission apart to put it back on. Ask me how I know. So now for all of the intermediate clutches and steels. So I'm going to start with a metal plate. So put the steel down. A little clutch. Steel and then alternating. So all these are in. There's the last clutch and steel. And then we have this uh, backing plate. This backing plate is gonna go on the top. Beefcake, hold everything down. And then we have our intermediate snap ring that goes on there. So I got two snap rings here. This is the factory snap ring. And this is the HD2 kit intermediate ring that comes with the kit. So you can see there's quite a big difference. This is the HD2 kit ring, and this is the factory ring right here. So a lot stronger, so I'm gonna toss this one aside. And then we're gonna put this Beefcake HD2 kit snap ring in there. And this one is going to go in with the opening at the nine o'clock position, just like all of the other ones. So all three of these snap rings get placed with the opening at the nine o'clock position. So next we're going to put in our front band assembly. Again, this little hole right here is going to come on this little peg that's sticking out. So we have one to line up in the peg, and then we have this section that's actually going to get pushed up with the little piston that comes in from the bottom side of the transmission here. So we're going to line this peg up with the hole. So I'm going to take this little piston. This is what actuates this one. Put it in there just to kind of show what it does. This is going to be in position here. It presses this ring in to grab onto the direct drum. So that's that. So next we're going to take the direct drum. We're going to drop this drum down. It's going to go inside that band that we just put down. It's also going to drop down in between all those clutches to verify that the direct drum is all the way down. Just kind of lift up on it. You'll hear that higher pitch metal on metal sound. It takes a little bit. Uh, you'll hear it drop down like if you do it like I did it. I heard it drop down like click 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 a couple times but I still had that thud sound so I knew I was still on top of one clutch. And then I turned it a little bit and then it popped down. You'll hear that noise. Now again, we have a, a situation where we're going to have to line up a bunch of clutches. See that the clutches are still kind of a little bit off. So I'm going to take a flathead and kind of make sure that these are all lined up. This is kind of a tricky process. But yeah, these are just weird. It seems like it's like one side's lined up, one side's not. So we'll try it again. Take this thing and drop it back down. We got that metal on metal. Drum is actually on the piston. So that was the install of the forward drum. Next we have this uh, bearing here. I'm actually waiting on a new one of these because this one's kind of a little bit crunchy. It's got some junk in it. So I'm waiting on a new one of these. So this isn't the final time it's going to be together. I'm just doing it for the sake of the video right now. But next we got this bearing going on. And the next I'm going to install the fourth drum. So with the fourth drum, 
we have a hole in there right here and that's gonna be our hole that's in the case that's gonna line up with this hole in the case right here so we're gonna want to make sure that that is facing in this direction and lined up with the case and then this top ring here is also going to be lined up on this little pin so now that that thing is dropped in that whole drum is dropped in we can take the input shaft with the overrun drum and this whole assembly here will just drop right in. Okay, so after we have the overrun drum all the way in and seated, and you can tell again it's metal on metal, we're gonna take the gasket for the front pump and make sure that this goes on the right way. And I'm just reusing this gasket right now. I'm not going to actually do it on the, the complete build, but I'm just doing this because I'm going to have to pull it back apart again to change that bearing, but I want to show you guys what this looks like. So we have this all lined up now. You can see all the holes are lined up all the way around. Now I'm going to throw the pump on. Slide the pump over the top, and you can see this side, there's two mounting holes down here. And then if you were to like draw a straight line all the way across to where these holes are, there's three on the top side. And then there's two on the bottom side over here. I'm gonna make sure that these are lined up. And then next thing I'm gonna go do is drop all the bolts in. And then I'll torque these bolts down to 18 foot pounds. And you're pretty much done. Okay, welcome back. So today we're finally gonna get to the installation of the Transgo HD2 kit. Basically just a shift kit. It increases the firmness and it also comes in this nice blue little capsule. Increase your firmness. So that's what we like to hear, so let's get to it. There's a few different ways you can install this kit. You can install the kit with the transmission still in the vehicle, which is pretty cool. And you can install it with the transmission out of the vehicle. There's also some additional parts you can add if you have the transmission disassembled. In my situation, I'm doing a rebuild on the transmission, so I'm gonna add the extra part. Parts. There's a thicker, larger snap ring for the intermediate snap ring, and there's some stronger springs for the direct drum. So I'll show you that stuff. Don't feel like you have to use it. You can do it without those things. If you're not doing a rebuild and you don't have the transmission out of the vehicle, I wouldn't say it's really worth it to take the transmission completely apart to install a snap ring and different springs, but I'll show you both steps. Before we get started, let's take a look at the kit. So here's a kit. Comes in this nice little box imported from your neighbor's house in the good old US of A. Comes with some instructions several pages very nicely detailed if you don't know how to read it comes with pictures so i'll be using those a lot do have a few gaskets that are going to go around the valve body plate a couple springs accumulator springs drill bits a little bit of a relief plate i believe that is Some more gaskets boost valve boost valve sleeve all kinds of goodies don't forget about underneath comes with a new plate and then it also comes with a intermediate snap ring, which I already installed in the transmission, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so for this project, you are going to need to remove the valve body, so that requires removal of the fluid. So you have to drain the fluid, remove the oil pan, remove the valve body. I'll insert a clip here now of doing that. You got a couple uh, electronic items here. We have a, a couple solenoids. First thing I'm going to do is go through and and undo all these bolts here. There is a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts and then there is some um, eight millimeter bolts on top of this pressure switch assembly. I'm gonna go through right now and unbolt all these. This pressure switch assembly, uh, we'll undo the plug here. Just pull in on these little clippies, pull them out, and then we're gonna wanna twist this right here and then it'll it'll break free. We'll go ahead and remove the wiring harness. This is the A solenoid plug. This is the B solenoid plug. I already have them unclipped, but uh, this one is the torque converter clutch. And here is the pressure control. So I'm going to pull this off to the side. We can hang it off to the side like this. So one thing to watch out for is this unit here actually has a little pin that catches onto this valve. This is your manual valve for the valve body. This is what's basically making the selection and changing the, the hydraulic fluid passages inside based on the, the gear position. So now that we have all of the bolts out, I'm going to lift up this valve body and make sure that it's going to come out. So next there's gonna be eight little check balls in here. There's one here, one here, 
here, here, here, here, here, and here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use a little uh, Neo magnet, and I'm just gonna go through and uh, pull all of these check balls out of here. Okay, so now that we have the valve body completely removed, third and fourth accumulator springs and the plate, everything already gone, we're gonna focus on this section right here. So this section of the plate, we're looking at this hole. We're basically gonna be taking this section right here and drilling a hole. We're gonna start with a 1 8 hole and then we're gonna move up to a 3 16 All right, so we're gonna start by doing a little center punch. Punch a hole, I'm just using a nail. I'm not that fancy. And to protect the valve body, I just wrapped some tape around the bit. Now we're all the way through there. I'll we'll open it up to the 3 16 Next I'm just gonna go through and clean all these metal shavings out. All right, next we're gonna be taking out this roll pin right here. For this plug, we're gonna remove this pin and that plug. Pop that pin out, and then this should come out. You see we have a, a solid plug, a spring, and then we have this valve. So just as this comes out, we have the pin, plug, spring, and valve. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be replacing this spring and this plug. New plug with the O-ring, and I'm gonna use the small blue spring. So we'll take the old pieces out, put the valve in, spring in, and then we'll go ahead and put the plug in. And after the plug is all the way in, Go ahead and insert this roll pin. I'll just tap it down, make sure it's flush. Next, we're gonna be removing this plug and this filter assembly over here. I'm going to remove this roll pin so we can get the plug out. I'll remove this manual valve on this side so I can come in from the other side with a long screwdriver. I'll give this thing some taps. launch everything across the room. So now that that's out, I'm gonna go ahead and put the manual valve back in. So what we're gonna be putting back in from the kit is this new plug here. It's kind of tapered on this end, has the O-ring on it. So that's gonna go in first. This is the old filter. We're gonna remove this O-ring. I actually have a new one from my rebuild kit, but you're gonna go ahead and remove this O-ring. This doesn't have one on there, so I'm just gonna leave it like it is. So it says in the instructions you may have to grind this thing down a little bit, which I actually did. You can see I just took some sandpaper on the floor and ground that down so it's a little bit smaller. We're gonna use the orange spring from the kit. This is gonna go in this way. And we're gonna use this new plug from the kit. It has a hole in it. All right, so after you get the filter, the plug, and the spring in there, you can take the other roll pin, drop it in through the top. Tap it down until it's flush. So next we're gonna take it and flip it over this way. Step four says to take this plate. We're gonna use these two holes here. Install this plate over these holes. It says to use two valve body bolts. Run them through the hole. And then there's two nuts that come with the kit. I'm gonna run these nuts onto the bolts. I'm right, gonna use this plate as a guide. Use a 3 16 bit and drill a hole straight through the valve body. And you can see the hole that we just drilled came through right inside the center of this hole where we drilled in before over here. The second hole we drilled just came through this pocket. Okay, next step is this little pin here with the yellow spring. 
I'm gonna take the yellow spring, push this through, and then put this little E-clip on there. Then that piece is done. We'll set that aside for later. Right, next, you're gonna have to drill some holes in this plate. There's a hole here, hole here, then a hole right here. Make sure you reference the instructions for this one because they're pretty specific. So there's three different sizes that you can drill. You can drill all the way up to 1 8 for different firmnesses and shifting and for off-road use. So I drilled mine to 0.96. That's supposed to be considered a firm shift. So I already have mine drilled, but basically you have a hole right here, right there, and right here. Next is the third accumulator spring. It's gonna be this white spring. If you pull this off, your third and fourth accumulator, this is how it's coming off. So you can reference that and replace this spring with the white spring here. So now we're starting to assemble. I'm gonna take this bell body here, the new gasket, put the gasket on, and the instructions talk about Z holes. So there's a hole right here and a hole right here. You're basically going to use those for alignment holes. And I'm gonna take the new plate. I'm gonna take two valve body bolts and line them up inside these holes, the Z holes for the alignment. So that'll prevent that from sliding around. Next, I'm gonna throw this gasket on here. And throw our third and fourth accumulator on. Now that that's done, we should be able to remove these Z-bolts and then we'll use some uh, assembly lube and stick the other gasket on. All right, this part here is another part you can do in or out of the transmission. I have the pump out of the transmission, so I'm gonna be doing it outside right now. Snap ring down here for the boost valve. Let's see how this slides right out. This boost valve assembly sliding right out here. That should be good. So we have this little valve, purple and a white spring here, this sleeve, and this other valve. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace it with all of this stuff. So this is the only piece of this assembly that we're gonna keep. So you can see we have the new valve, new sleeve, new washer, new springs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this all back in same way that it came out. So we'll slide the valve all the way in, put the green and the purple spring all the way in, put the washer in, washer will seat down right on the top of that green spring, take the boost valve and the sleeve assembly, and we'll drop this in, slide this all the way in, basically slide this in as far as we can until we can get this snap ring on. So now this is installed, push this in to get that snap ring in there, should be good to go. This was actually kind of tough. I didn't record much of it because it was actually kind of tough to do, especially with this off on the bench. So I guess if I had to do it again, I would do it with it in the transmission. It's actually quite a bit easier because when you got this lifted up like this and you're trying to push down on it, it's just trying to rotate and flip and flop around. So, And if you are doing the boost valve assembly, this is where you'll remove this down here if the pump is installed in the case. Okay, so you are also going to need to replace the reverse servo spring. So this is just going to be under here. It's this red spring. It's going to come up, come with another orange one. This is actually the one from the kit, HD2 kit. So just showing you which one it is. All right, next we're gonna put the valve body back on. So I did put uh, seven of the check balls back in. This location right here is not gonna have a check ball when you put it back in. So let's leave that one out. But you'll have one here, 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 and here. And it does have a drawing in the instructions, so we'll reference that. So I'm gonna take my valve body. I did uh, use some assembly lube on the back side of this so it's not gonna come off. It's gonna hold itself on there pretty nicely when I flip it over. So I'm just gonna flip this right over the top, go straight down. I do need to make sure that this manual valve is inside the gear selector. This is what I'm talking about here. 
make sure that manual valve is actually attached to the selector. Put my pressure switch on. Pressure switch has the eight millimeter bolts. I'm gonna start dumping in all of my 10 millimeter bolts to hold the valve body on. This little guy in there. This is that pressure relief valve. Put my wiring back in. We have this lubrication tube back here that goes to the back. There's a little hold down bracket. This plug goes here into the pressure switch. All right, so now I'm just gonna bolt these down. This one here and then this one probably right there. So next after that, all the wiring is good. Next all I have to do is put the filter on. Take it and just twist this down and twist this into place. Now next I'll take my gasket, put it on the right way. Put my pan back on and then we're done.